Australia's treacherous coast and coral reefs have claimed over 8,000 ships. Some carried fabulous treasures, remnants of early Dutch and English exploitation. Now dashed upon jagged reefs, they've become sunken treasures and filed dreams. The Dutch were the first to explore Australia from 1606, and the bones of seven of their treasure ships bound for Batavia lie along the West Australian coast. The unknown east coast was not explored until 1770 by Captain Cook. An era began where thousands of ships went down to a watery grave, ravaged by storms and inaccurate charts. I found more than a hundred of these shipwrecks. Moorings off Adam, please. Now I'm looking for those that had treasure on board. My pursuit of these sunken treasures must surely be the most tantalising and subjective of all my discoveries. Now she's not sitting very high above the sand, only a metre or two, and from what I hear it's just a, a great pile of ballast stones. Must have gone down the cyclone because she's sitting out here in you know, a 15 mile off Port Douglas out in the shipping channel, but we don't know what ship it is. There's no record of this ship going down here. Every time I come across a wreck like this, I think about the treasure ship Madagascar. She left Melbourne in 1853 with 60,000 ounces of gold on board. And that's worth about $40 million today. And she disappeared, never seen again. No one knows really where she's been lost. And one day, you know, some lucky diver is going to stumble across this treasure ship and all that gold. And that's why, you know, every time I see a wreck like this, I think, uh-uh, never know, could be the Madagascar. I'm going down for a look. Pete West and I have talking masks. Visibility will be poor. Communication essential. OK, Ben, I'm on the bottom. I can just make out a dark mass up ahead. It seems to be spread over quite a distance here. Look at that pile of ballast stones. Lots of lionfish. Very tame. My eyes are focused for the glint of gold, and I take only a passing interest in this brass ring from the ship's wheel. Big greasy cod. Here's a cannon. It's lying on top of another. The ship must be old. This is a big ship, well over 100 tonnes, you know, big enough to be the Madagascar. I think I'll keep my eye out for the colour yellow. There was no colour yellow. I drop Pete off at Port Douglas and head north with a crew of four. My son Adam, Lynn Roberts, John Harding and Erin Pleasdale. We enter Bathurst Bay, where Aborigines painted history on cave walls that link with Australia's greatest maritime disaster. Ah, here it is. Looks good. They're really something, Lynn, aren't they? Beautifully drawn axes, <laughs> a pipe, scissors, here, another axe. Obviously, the Aborigines who drew this, they were given these by the white men. They were working for the pearl divers, and obviously they were paid in these goods. So they brought up the scissors, axes, pipes, and 
drawn them exactly. Can't tell exactly what these are with the H. All I can think of is maybe bags of pearl shell. And H would be the, the company name. This is interesting, Len. Look at the jacket. You know, when you first look at this, you think, wow, this is a gentleman, you know, from the 1700s. Uh, fancy jacket, tight pants like breeches, and down here, high-heeled shoes. You know, I was looking at this thinking, boy, you know, this thing could be in English, Portuguese, Sp uh, Spanish, French, you know, way, way back. But looking at it more, no, no, absolutely no. It's a stockman. The main thing that gives it away is the head. Now that's a profile, and I know that the Aborigines never drew profiles of white people until quite much later when they got to know them very well, when they really were living with them, working with them. So this would be a drawing back around the 1890s, I suppose, at the same time that the Luggers came here. And of course the Stockmaners rode in and they thought, well, we'll draw him. More here. Aha. Uh -huh. But it'd have to be a knife. I mean, have a look on the ceiling. This has to be a dolphin or a dugong or maybe a pilot whale. Yeah, it looks a bit like a dolphin. You excavating, Tuffy? This would be a mother ship. Uh, all the sails set would have been sailing just past here at, in Bathurst Bay. And she'd be part of the pearling fleet, the, the mother ship. And such intricate, you know, design especially with the sails, maybe the portholes, maybe even the name here, NT. Beautiful dugong up here. This is a, a beautiful drawing of a lugger. The amazing thing here, this is history. You see, these luggers would have been drawn in the 1890s when the pearling fleet were out here, when the Aborigines were helping them, when they collected their knives and axes. But these luggers don't exist anymore. They were wiped out in the big cyclone of 1899, right out here in Bathurst Bay. John, there's so many wrecks out there, you know, 70 of them, lots of luggers. Uh, we've got to go out and find them, or some of them. At least yeah, I'm pretty sure I know where the light ship is anyway. We can do that one first. 300 people drowned. 70 ships went down in the most powerful of all cyclones. Right, we're coming up to light ship now. You can see the position marked on the GPS. I found her about 18 years ago. You see, I, I marked it on the chart. And uh, we didn't dive because the water was very dirty. And on the way up, we saw a tiger shark. And we went, uh-oh. Oh. We'll leave this for another day, and today's the day. She went down in the cyclone of uh, 1899, and the waves simply engulfed her, and down she went mm. at, the, at the mooring. And she's the only lightship wreck in Australia, uh -huh. so definitely worth a dive. Thank okay. you. Visibility is poor, 25 metres down, so we extend a line from the anchor and sweep the ocean floor to locate the wreck. The line will also be our guide back to the anchor chain and my boat. The key to this being the light ship is the artefacts we find. Marine organisms and seawater attack a sunken ship. Like a mummy long entombed, the ship's remains will deteriorate if taken up to the air. Hardly recognisable, this is an old-fashioned grinding wheel. Here are two oil lamp bases.
And Adam has found the ship's bell. The wreck is indeed the Channel Rock lightship. Divers up, baited hooks go down. The 1899 cyclone created a massive tidal surge of 12 metres, the highest ever recorded. It swept boats, bodies and equipment high above the beach area. I'm hoping to find some evidence of this flotsam. Girl, have a look along this eroded bank here because, you know, things could be exposed that were washed in with the cyclone. Yep. Worth looking. I'm going to follow up the creek. Going. Here, John. John, what do you got? Brass. Wow. Bit of wreckage. Yeah. Oh, I can't even. Yeah, look. Um, hey. I think it's what I. Yes. Yeah, what is it? Diver's helmet. <sighs> okay. okay. It's fine. Coming? Yep. There's more than fish and corals down here on Clack Reef. Now, we're above where the Eastern Argosy were the ground. She wasn't totally wrecked. She got off, but before she got off, she had to throw all the cargo overboard. And it's literally a minefield of cargo down here. There's crockery, stacks of crockery, some uh, uh, liquor as well. But the water's dirty, and you're just going to have to sort of scrounge around. She went aground in 1970, so she doesn't come under the Historic Shipwreck Act. So you can bring the stuff up. Relics in the mud are well preserved, but corals grow quickly on the exposed cargo. Even mundane relics are exciting to find. coral encrusted, didn't it? Yeah. Gives you an idea just how, how quickly that coral grows. So that's since 1970. Yeah. And cups, pretty, some of them are broken. But e even this, you know, the delicate corals. And look what John found. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, there'd be crates of this down there. Yeah. Lots and lots of them. Pity, you know, you've only found one. Oh, well. <laughs> have, to, have to go back and get more. I think we should try it. It's got an air pocket, so it should be okay. So. Yeah. Aaron, can you grab me a um, bottle opener, please? We'll, we'll try it. Thank wow. you. <laughs> this should be a good drop, eh? <laughs> you can try it, man. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Comes out easy. Oh, 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 here we go, here we go. Oh. 
<laughs> it tastes all right. It tastes all right. Oh. I tell you what, that's a powerful drop. Not your rod. Right? <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> it smells bad enough. <laughs> oh. Oh. I don't think we'll go and find any more. Coming into Ferguson Reef, and we're going to look at the wreck there. It's actually called the Ferguson. Mm. It went down in uh, 1840. Right. I found it about oh 25 years ago, and worth a dive. Many a reputation has been made and tarnished in the pursuit of treasure. Wreck diving does something to you, but the law and common sense curbs the pirate that stirs in your blood. All goodies recovered that are more than 75 years old must go back on the seabed, and that's a hard thing to do, believe me. Aha! You know what that is? No. Now that's a trigger guard from a brown bess, was the, the name of the rifle in those days. Well, it's interesting. Pity you've got to go and put it back. Truly. Oh. Oh, good, John. These were commemorative buckles, and they, they went across the, the sash, you know, the straps that went across the chest, crossways. And they, yeah, well, they commemorated the Battle of the Nile. And you can see here the 50th Regiment. Well, these were called the Fighting Half Hundred, a uh, famous regiment. Well, John, have to put them back. I'm coming into the area that is a graveyard of old sailing ships. Now this is Great Detached Reef where we're here now and I know that there were seven shipwrecks on this particular reef and years ago we searched this whole reef area here and we found six of them. One was missing and the reason why I want to find this seventh one is very important because one of the ships was called the Fatima and she went down with 18,600 ounces of gold. Wow. Yeah. And that's worth about oh, 11 million today. I've looked at all these other wrecks, haven't found any sign of gold. So if I can find the seventh one, maybe, maybe that's the one that we want. We'll head out near the breakers just a little bit, John. Look for any dark spots on the reef and any straight line. A wreck. And look at the chain here. Oh, this is shark too. Big shark. Oh, no. Holy <laughs> shark. It's all right, we can get in with that one. Right, we've got our wreck, number seven. Here's another shark, coming in now. Here he is, a little whaler. The Fatima is a typical treasure ship where fate so cruelly snatched the gold from its rightful owners. Identifying the ship is difficult. I have seven names and seven wrecks to choose from. Finding the right cargo will help me. You know what that is? No idea. Well, well that's a crucible. That's what they uh, 
you know, assay precious minerals. Yeah. And they put them in little assay cups oh, yeah. to uh, check out the mineral. And here I've got an assay cup. There. Ah. It's mate. And this one, you know what that is? No. Uh -huh. No. It's not a cross. It's part of a scale. Oh, yeah. So we're definitely on a ship that carried precious metals. So could that be the Fatima? I would say so, yes. But now we've got to really find the gold. And, and the problem is the gold's not going to be here where this stuff got washed in. It's going to be right out in the surf. And it's heavy. It's going to be right down on the bottom. And if it's gold dust, we forget it. But if it's um, fingers of gold, you know, they make by pouring the gold into furrows in the sand, then we've got a chance. We're really excited now. All eyes are focused for the glint of gold. My heart jumps every time I see the colour yellow. It happens to be a common colour in corals. We scrounged the wreckage for two days and failed to find the mother load of gold bullion. It may be well buried under 150 years of coral growth. Very likely, the bullion was mostly gold dust, now scattered like grains of sand across the reef floor and lost forever. It's not only gold that glitters. The reef sparkles in the clear waters of the coral sea, its inhabitants large and friendly. Catching a feed is easy, as long as I reel it in fast before the sharks take it from me. It's a good one. We visit Sir Charles Hardy Island, once a haven for shipwreck survivors. You know, Lynn, there's so many Spanish galleon legends in Australia, and I've investigated all of them, and they're just... No, no, except for one. I've got my doubts about one. And it actually happened right here on Sir Charles Hardy Island. And that was because the ship Mariner was wrecked out there on Great Detached Reef where we were. And the survivors landed here and they found two wrecks, one recent, one old. And from the old one, they recovered this brass cannon to use as ballast in the boat. And it had the markings Santa Barbara on it. And apparently the date 1596. So maybe there's a Spanish galleon out here, but only here. All the rest of them around Australia, no, they don't exist. Anyway, there's the water up there. Here's the water hole. Now this was very important to the castaways. It was marked on the old charts, and that's why they came in here. And also, the, another good thing about it is there were no headhunters here. So every castaway, every shipwreck out there, they came here to Sir Charles Hardy to drink this water. How is it? Well, it's okay if you're desperate. <laughs> Still, it was vital for them. Oh, it's a child's grave, you know, too small. Not many children, you know, survived the ordeal of being a castaway. Cockburn Reef, another graveyard of ships. What's this for? That's a manta board. I'm going to tell you guys across the reef here because out here there's nine shipwrecks. And one in particular I want to find because it's called the Anne and she went down with a cargo of species, which is coins, in 1853. Okay, who's first? I'm ready. I'll toss it to you. Oh, 
The motherboard is simple and efficient. We cover a large area in a short time. Expertise is required to identify any passing shape shrouded in coral that may be a wreck. What did you see? Wreckage, heaps of wreckage. Uh -huh. A big uh, oil. Iron cauldrons are everywhere. They must be cargo for a foundry. are for transporting those smelting pots to the furnace. Now the treasure ship Anne could have carried these, but our next find dashes my hopes. How about this? Oh right, that's good. Bullets. You got a whole pile That's too. too. I recognise these. That's a calibre 45. You know, they used in the Colt handguns, the old Wild West movies. It's a pity because this dates the wreck. You see, they didn't start manufacturing these till 18, 1873. And the Anne, she went down in 1853, you know, 20 years earlier. Oh. So we know we're not on the wreck that I want. But still, interesting story here because they're 58 calibre and they used those in the Snyder rifles. They, ha they actually had a cardboard backing. That's why you're not seeing the rest of the shell. Now they're the calibres of rifles that uh, were given to the natives up north in the islands when they were swapping for Kanaka labour. Ah. So you're probably on a blackbirder here. Okay. Anyway, we've got to go. Let's go. Let's put them back. Aww. something. What did you see? A great pile of ballast. Oh, right. Okay. And what looks like some keel bolts. Now this looks more promising. The line of keel bolts shows she's a timber sailing ship that broke her back on the reef. That's a glass skylight, once a fixture in the top deck. heavy. Now that's a lead line. You see, that's what they dropped to determine the, the uh, depth. And you can see this hole here. Right, that's where they put tallow. And uh, so they, they know what's on the bottom. Oh, right. Dropped too late to save her, all that remains now is the line of kill bolts. One cannon and a great mound of ballast rocks. The wreckage is totally covered in seaweed, obliterating our chance of seeing a mound of coins, which are going to look like one of those rocks anyway. Let's forget it, John. That weed just makes it impossible. You know, that's going to be one lost treasure that's going to stay lost. Yeah. Treasure hunting is so frustrating, but I never give up hope. I'm just running up to the top of Ashmore Reef now, Adam. Yeah. Another half hour. I want to look for a wreck up. 
right up the top, the, okay. the sun. That's that really old treasure ship, isn't it, with all the coins? That's right, 30 or 40,000 uh, Spanish silver do dollars. Well, that's worth a bit. Now, they did say that it, it went down on eastern fields, but I remember Wally Gibbons and I, 25 years ago, we really searched that reef. And then I realised, you know, they're always out in longitude. Latitude, they're correct. And on the same latitude, we've got a small reef. And also, another clue I've got is that back in 1906, some native divers were uh, fishing around there for Beche de Mer, and they came across this wreck, and they recovered a uh, small brass cannon, which was a French espinal. Now, the skipper of the Sun also was French. It was a French ship. Okay. And very, very likely, they've actually found the Sun for us. See that black line running across the reef? Now that's the anchor chain of a shipwreck and I reckon that that would be the treasure ship the sun. I think we may have found it. Let's go have a look. Definitely an anchor chain. Just go down near the end of it. I want to find the ballast pile. This will be where the ship broke up. Slow down, slow down, right down. No. Look for the odd coin, that's fair enough, but the real bulk of the coins will be in a big rock, like a conglomerate of uh, lots of coins fused together. Since 1770, most ships that plied Australian waters were English, and they were a poor lot when it came to carrying treasure. The glory days of Spanish and Dutch conquests and pirates were over. This treasure ship, Sun, was an exception. 40,000 Spanish coins relives boyhood dreams of pirates of the Spanish main. But um, we'll have to put them in, in some acid, you know. Find the date, and the date's important. Then we know we've got the wreck if the date's right. Oh, shit. <coughs> oh. It's hydrochloric acid. About an hour or so, and they'll be shining clean. It looks about right. Right, it should be all right. Let's see what we got. Well, that one didn't clean up much at all, Erin. That one you got, didn't it? No. This one here, that's got a hole in it. That would be worn around the neck of someone. Yeah, it looks like a four real. Aha! Uh -huh. This one looks good. Date, Erin. You've got better eyes than me. Yeah. 1807. 1807. So uh, the sun went down 1826, and that's perfect. This has got to be the sun. But where are the rest of the coins? Well, since I've been waiting for this to come good, I went through all my files and I found something which is quite a disappointment. Here. Now, you've heard of the Jardine treasure, the yeah. famous Jardine treasure. Jardine sent a, a schooner out here and they accidentally found a wreck. Right. And when they checked around an, an anchor, they found this mass of coins, thousands and thousands of coins, and brought them back. Now, they never said 
exactly you know where they found it and there were so many legends attributed to all this but Jardine drew a map and this map is identical to the one in there and there's the upright anchor there's the cannon on the left this anchor here where you found the coins the long chain and this circle here represents the coins that they found a mass of coins so the treasure did exist but it's gone it's gone someone else beat us to it should be coming up to it soon we're on a level bottom 100 feet 30 meters one shipwreck where the treasure still exists is the pandora I discovered her back in 1977. She was returning to England with captured mutinies of the famous Bounty and struck a coral reef when trying to pass through Torres Strait. The shackled mutineers barely escaped as the ship went down. Here it comes, yep, this is the Pandora. We got it. A marker boy is dropped so that I can anchor free them a short distance away and run back in the dinghy. I don't want my heavy anchor and chain damaging the wreck site. She's a perfect time capsule of a British naval man of war of the 18th century. All the items the ship and crew carried lie buried on the sea floor. Claimed as the most significant marine archaeological find in Australia, the Queensland Museum divers have carried out the fatiguing process of exhuming artefacts for further study on land and the creation of a Pandora Museum in Townsville. From unrecognisable clumps of concretion, a sextant emerges and the ship surgeon's gold watch, all carefully restored in this room. What are you doing, Alexandra? I'm in the process of mending a couple of glass fragments together from the Pandora. I'll be using an adhesive, an epoxy adhesive, to glue the fragments together. Are these all from the Pandora? Yes, they are, yeah. yeah. And we're just, what we're doing here is we're trying to assess the condition of the object. And what's the reading for, Andy? This is a pH reading, and this is just here to check the stability, the solution, to make sure that the iron is going to be stable at that pH level, which it is, it's in the right range. And we're impressing a current into the metal, which is converting the corrosion product and actually helping to release chloride ions, which will cause deterioration of the artifact. Off Townsville, I search for a fabled pirate legend. You know, Lynn, there's quite a treasure story here on Magnetic Island. A Japanese pirate, a Yamada Nagamasa, apparently was plundering ships, you know, in the southwest Pacific, and he came here to Magnetic Island and apparently buried his treasure somewhere here. And people have looked for it, but no one has found it yet. And this bay here is the only anchorage that he could have sat in while he buried the treasure. So what I'm looking for is some significant landmark that uh, he can recognise if he wanted to come back and pick up the treasure. What about that big rock up there, Ben? Yeah, it's split right down the middle. Yeah, that, that's a real landmark. I think we should check it out.
Ah, there it is. There's a crevasse running all the way through. I think we can get in. Wow. Boy. So what do we look for? A sign? X marks the spot? Ah. Ah, see this, Len? Look, this little hollow here and a cross and there's a line, two going out and looks like an arrow, a couple of diamonds, definitely something but pretty faded. I think we've got to sketch it and I have a really good look at what it is. All right, there's a ring and a cross and this big upsweep with uh, two arrows. Oh, little gecko looking at it. And these diamonds. I wonder, wonder what that means, you know, two diamonds. And finally, a little arrow on the top. There it is, Len. <laughs> what does it mean? I showed the symbol to renowned psychic and she said it tells her that a fabulous treasure is indeed buried here. The Dutch found Australia's west coast by accident and left the bones of seven galleons and fabulous treasure on the coral reefs. Beacon Island became an isolated strip of hell when the Batavia survivors struggled ashore in 1629. The riches in a hold, ten chests of silver and gold, caused mutiny, massacre, madness and torture. Ninety-six men, women and children were slaughtered. Archaeologists have unearthed gruesome clues to violent deaths. This one suffered a cutlass blow to the head. In 1973, I joined the West Australian Museum's team of archaeologists in their first excavation of the Batavia. In this archival film, the divers are sandbagging the excavated timber hull to keep it in place until lifted and restored. We help with the recovery of coins. There are thousands of them. Hundreds of bricks are salvaged. These were destined for the fortress in Batavia, the Dutch capital of Java. Australia's richest treasure trove is painstakingly restored. Today, there are still some coins to be found down on the Batavia graveyard, if you know precisely where to look.
The mutineers, in their gruesome murders for the treasure, met an equally violent retribution. Tortured for 10 days until they signed their confessions, their hands were then cut off and they died on the gallows. Oh, that was good. That was good. It's a wild man. It's a German coin from the Thirty Year War. He's holding a tree trunk, like a staff. And look at the date, 1624. I mean, that's old, old. And over on the back, he's got a, a beautiful design. Now, this is a, a very valuable coin. This is worth, um, you know, at least a couple of thousand dollars. But I can't sell it. The Australian government actually owns all the coins down here. Oh, I recognise this one. That's William of Orange. He's got a sword over his shoulder. Now, he was actually the cause of the Thirty uh, Year War because he was assassinated by the Spanish. So the Spanish and the Dutch went to war. The date, 1619. Ah, oh, this one's a cross. I think it's called a cross dolly. This, this is German also. And uh, here we've got a double eagle, a double eagle there. And look at the date. Here it is, 1586. Now that's, what, 200 years before uh, the colony of Australia was founded with Captain Arthur Phillip. And it's been sitting on the seabed for 150 years before Cook sailed along the east coast on the Australian coastline. This has been sitting. That is amazing. The remains of three more Dutch treasure ships have been found. In 1656, the gilt dragon piled up on a reef 110 kilometres north of Perth. All on board perished, for those who made it ashore died of thirst, carrying handfuls of useless coins. Calm seas belie the tragedy that unfolded here. Her remains are so scattered and buried, it's only by chance I find a little of the treasure she carried. I've got some goodies. Hold out your hand. There you are. Be careful. Yeah, they're Spanish pieces of eight, eight reals. In those days, this coinage was common denomination all around the world. You know, the English, the Dutch, everyone used this as general currency. A lot more down there. People, uh, you know, the museum has picked up thousands and thousands of these. Somewhere out there, along the rugged West Australian coast, lie three more Dutch galleons. An enormous treasure in gold and silver is yet to be found. Those crew who did not drown were cast ashore on an inhospitable coast, and the little wealth they may have carried is now dead men's silver.